welcome to another live Facebook chat. We're going to give everybody just a few more seconds to join us and log in. So while we're waiting, take a look at the real star of the show. Now that we've had time for a few more people to join us, welcome. My name is Claire and I'm one of the interpretive specialists here at the Fort Worth Zoo. Today, I'm inside our Museum of Living Art, or MOLA for short, to talk to you about our Komodo dragons. Now, Komodo dragons are the largest species of lizard in the world and they are found only on five islands in Indonesia. The one that we have out here in the exhibit today is our nine-year-old male. His name is Bintang. He is currently about six and a half feet long and close to 85 pounds. So he's a pretty big boy. He has lived here for most of his life and he, at nine years old, actually still has a little bit more growing to do, as big as he already is. He's close to his full length, but he will continue to fill out a little bit and bulk up as he gets older. Even with a little bit of growing left to do though, Bintang is considered an adult Komodo dragon and he actually already has 11 kids. Bintang's kids were the first baby Komodo dragons to hatch here at the Fort Worth Zoo back in 2017. 10 of them have already gone off to live at other zoos, but one of his daughters stayed here with us. and Her name is Daya. You've probably already noticed that Daya isn't in the room with Bintang, and that's because in the world of Komodo dragons, kids don't really hang out with their parents like humans do. In fact, adult com female Komodo dragons lay their eggs in the sand, they bury them, leave them to incubate in that nice warm sand on their own, and then when they hatch eight or nine months later, the babies take care of themselves right from the very beginning. I bet some of you parents are just a little bit jealous right now. But Komodo dragons are experts at social distancing and they don't hang out really much with each other whether they're related or not. Komodo dragon young ones actually don't even live in the same type of habitat as their parents. So they don't really come across each other very often. Adult Komodo dragons like Bintang spend all of their time down on the ground but young Komodo dragons live the first part of their lives up in the trees. To help them blend in with their leafy homes, young Komodo dragons are born black with yellow spots. So that helps them to kind of blend in up in the trees. And while they're climbing around up there, they eat small things like birds, eggs, and insects. Then as they get older, they come down to the ground more and more often, and they start to change to more of the sandy or brown color of the adults to help them blend in with the ground while they're hunting for larger types of prey. Whether they're living in the trees or on the ground though, Komodo dragons are what we call carnivores, which means that they only eat meat. They may not like their fruits and vegetables, but they are not at all picky about what type of meat they eat. And they're not even picky about whether they catch the meat themselves or find an animal that's been dead for a few days. Here at the zoo, we feed Bintang smaller things most of the time, like mice, rats, quail, or fish. And then once a month, he gets what's called a bulk feed which is a big piece of goat or lamb or pig. And that's what you're getting to see here today. That thing that he's pulling on and wrestling with is actually a big chunk of pork. And he, as you can see, is really enjoying that. In the wild, their main prey would be small deer, but they can also hunt things as large as water buffalo. Now, even the largest Komodo dragons can't eat a whole water buffalo by themselves but they can eat an astonishing amount of food when they're hungry. Komodo dragons can eat up to 75% of their body weight in one sitting. And that would be like a 100 pound human eating 300 quarter pound hamburgers for one meal. 
As crazy as that is though, Komodo dragons can't do that every day. Instead, they'll gorge themselves on a big meal like that, and then they can go several weeks before they have to be able to eat again. So for Bintang in here, that piece of meat that he's eating weighs close to eight and a half pounds. He will probably eat the entire thing over the course of the afternoon today, and then his keepers won't have to feed him again for about a week and a half, because he'll take a while to digest all of that yummy meat. Speaking of eating and hunting though, one of the main questions that we get here at our Komodo chats at the zoo is, are Komodo dragons venomous? And the answer is, that question is still up for debate. It all boils down to how various scientists define venom. But what we do know is that Komodo dragons have bacteria in their mouths, which could cause an infection in an animal they bite. So it's not like a snake venom where it might have to be treated with an anti-venom. Instead, a person who was unlucky enough to be bitten by a Komodo dragon could take antibiotics, which would take care of the bacteria. And that's not really any different from most other kinds of animals or people for that matter. If you were to be bitten by a dog or a cat or a person, you would have to take antibiotics then too. Along with hearing that Komodo dragons are potentially venomous, you may have also heard that they like to hunt by ambushing a prey animal, biting it once, and then following it around for several days until it dies. But Komodo dragons are actually quite a bit more efficient at hunting than that. These guys will ambush prey and then bite onto it, and they have lots and lots of sharp teeth. So their teeth are really what helps them to catch their food more than any bacteria that might be in their mouths. Komodo dragon's teeth are serrated on the edges, kind of like the edge of a steak knife, and they curve backward into their mouth, sort of like a fish hook. So once they grab onto something, it's very difficult for that animal to escape. And that means that the bacteria only has time to potentially cause an infection on the rare occasions when an animal does maybe manage to escape from that very first attack. Now, since Komodo dragons have lots of sharp teeth, another question that we get pretty frequently is, are Komodo dragons dangerous to their keepers? But actually, our, our keepers go into the exhibit with our Komodo dragons on a daily basis to feed and to clean up after them. And you wouldn't want to get that close to one in the wild, but Komodo dragons here, these ones, have all been in the zoo for their whole lives. So they're really used to their keepers. They know that they're just there to take care of them, and they don't see them as any form of potential food source or as a type of threat. Fortunately for us though, Komodo dragons can also be trained to do different things that help us to take care of them. For example, Bintang is trained to target. Now targeting is something that we've talked about in some of our previous live chats, but it's just where an animal learns to touch part of their body to a particular object. In Bintang's case, he knows to touch his nose to the end of his target stick, and then he gets a treat. And that allows his keepers to lead him around the exhibit wherever they need him to go, with, if they need him out of the way while they're cleaning. He is also trained to shift through the doors that are over there in those little cave areas to the left-hand side of his exhibit, so his keepers can put him in his bedroom or in his outdoor area to keep things interesting for him. Now, just like our Komodo dragons don't spend all of their time in one room, Wild Komodo dragons also don't spend all of their time on one island. Like I mentioned at the beginning, Komodo dragons are found only on five islands in Indonesia, but they are very good swimmers. So the Komodos can actually swim between the different islands if they are looking for a new place to find food or mates. And that's really good for the population as a whole because it means the gene pool is much more diverse than it would be if those were five separate populations on the five separate islands. As a whole though, Komodo dragons as a species are considered vulnerable, partly because they're found in such a small area of the world and partly because of habitat loss. Fortunately for the Komodos though, 
a large section of their native habitat is now protected as the Komodo National Park. And they get lots of funding for conservation from tourists who like to come to those islands and learn more about these fascinating creatures. Now going to see the Komodo dragons in the wild would be really cool and would help uh, to support their conservation, but that's not always an option for all of us, especially right now when we're not really supposed to travel anywhere. However, there are some different types of lizards that live right in our own backyards. So if you're interested in helping out the little cousins of the dragons, you can go out in your backyard and look around and see if you have any lizard habitat around where you live. When, when lizards are looking for a good place to live, they look for four different types of things. They need a place to be able to hide, they need places to find food, they need a place to be able to bask in the sun, and they need a source of water. So look around in your backyard, see how many of those things might already exist where you live, and then see if there are some ways that you could improve or add to the lizard habitat that you have right in your own backyard. It could be as easy as putting a big rock out in their garden for them to bask on, or putting a pile of fallen sticks in the corner to give them a place to hide. And the more lizards you have around in your backyard here in Texas, the more bugs they'll be able to eat through you, because that's what the lizards that live around here like to munch on. If you want to share your lizard habitats with us on social media, you can send pictures and use hashtag Fort Worth Zoo. I'm looking forward to seeing all of the lizard lounges that you come up with. But until then, enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe. We're going to wrap up my part of the talking now and see if we can hear from you guys. Do you have any questions about the Komodo dragons? Can you tell us again who this is and how big he is and how long he is? Absolutely. So this one's name is Bintang. He is our nine-year-old male. He's about six and a half feet long and close to 85 pounds. And why are they called dragons? Probably because they are so big. You can imagine that the first people ever to see them would have thought that they were pretty startlingly large. And they probably reminded them of the stories of dragons that we read in books. And can gender be determined by temperature? Yes, uh, they can be like different types of lizards and crocodilians. You mentioned that they are good swimmers. Are they fast runners or good climbers? Yes, when they're young, they're very good climbers. Then as they get older and they get to be over 100 pounds, they stop being quite so good at climbing. But all Komodo dragons are good swimmers and they can be very fast on land when they want to be. They can run about 15 miles an hour for short distances. Do they have any mating rituals? The males will sometimes wrestle with each other to win over the females, but the male and female don't actually spend a whole lot of time together. Generally, they come together for breeding and then they go off and do their own thing again. Do they make any noises? They can make kind of a hissing noise if they're not feeling very happy, but they don't do a whole lot of vocalizing. How do they communicate with one another? Usually through body language. So the males, when they fight with each other, will try to stand up and make themselves look all big and tall. And then sometimes they'll wrestle with each other to see who's the strongest. And how big can they get? The largest ones reported can be up to 300 pounds but most of the time they're going to be a little over 100 pounds for the males. Remember that they can eat up to 75 percent of their body weight at once so potentially that 300 pound one had just had a really big meal. Do they live in groups or individuals? They generally hang out by themselves. The exception is if somebody finds a meal that's large enough to share. So if one of them does manage to catch something as large as, say, a water buffalo, other Komodo dragons might sense that that has happened and come over to help them eat it. But they don't really hang out in groups most of the time. How many Komodo dragons are here at the Fort Worth Zoo? We have two. Bin Tang is the one that you can see, and then his daughter is back behind the scenes, and her name is Daya. And are these guys lizards? 
They are lizards. They are actually the largest species of lizard in the world. So do they shed their skin? They do. Actually, if you look closely at Bintang's back leg there, you can see how a little bit of his skin is hanging off his leg. These guys can't shed all in one piece like a snake because their legs are in the way, um, but they do shed their skin in pieces and they will shed pretty regularly over the course of their life. And how many uh, eggs do they lay at one time? They can lay about 20 eggs at one time. And how long will the mother incubate the eggs? The eggs incubate for eight or nine months, but the mother actually just leaves them to incubate by themselves in the warm sand, and she doesn't take care of them at all. What are their predators in the wild? Good question. So once they get full grown, there's not a whole lot that's gonna mess with an adult Komodo dragon. But when they're younger, they might have to worry about things like bigger birds or medium-sized mammals, or they might even have to worry about being eaten by a larger Komodo dragon, which is part of the reason that the young ones live the first part of their lives up in the trees where the adults that are too big to climb can't get to them. And how long will it take him to eat this um, food right here? He'll probably eat it over the course of the next hour or so. And is their bite really venomous? It is not considered venomous in the same way as a snake sometimes is considered venomous. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, it really just depends on how different scientists define venom, whether they call them that or not. But these guys, mostly it's about the bacteria in their mouth rather than an actual venom like a snake would produce. And in the wild, how many of the eggs that are laid actually survive into adulthood? That is an excellent question. I actually don't know the answer to that one. That would be a good research <laughs> project. Um, and how big are the babies when they're born? They are close to a foot long when they're born, but really skinny. So you can imagine them all kind of curled up in their eggs. Are these guys endangered? They are currently considered vulnerable, which is a little bit better than being endangered, um, but still, a pretty small population. And can you um, train a Komodo dragon? Yes, they are actually quite intelligent. He, Bintang, is trained to target, which means he knows to put his nose to the end of a stick, and that allows his keepers to move him around. And then he's also trained to shift through a door whenever his keepers ask him to, so that they can move him from one room to the other. And last question, how many teeth does a Komodo dragon have? Ooh, good question. Komodo dragon's teeth aren't super big, but they do have about 60 of them, which is definitely more than us. Once again, thank you all for joining us here at the MOLA to learn about our fantastic Komodo dragon. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and we can't wait to see those pictures of your lizard habitats. Have a great day.